Look who I found in London. Finally, well, three years later. I guess technically he found me. So we're here in London. That tiramisu was amazing. Filippo is gonna go back and interview me about my trip. Uh, I think he's got a few juicy questions he wants me to answer, and I figure why not share the answers with you guys, see what you think. Uh, I'm gonna be as honest as possible. I have no idea what he's gonna ask me. He's told me he's gonna keep me on my toes, so we're gonna head back to his place and answer a few questions. If he's waiting at the doorstep when I get there, it means he won. And if he's not waiting at the doorstep, it means I won. So we'll find out in 10 minutes. Oh. You owe me a beer. You owe me a beer. Let's go. Do you have the key, by the way? I thought you had the key. You have the key in your pocket. I saw them before. Uh -huh. Don't cheat on me. <laughs> <sighs> this guy. This guy. Hey Corey, how's it going? It's going great, Flebo. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is kind of it's kind of uh, strange, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, we are here in London finally. We we met actually three years ago. I can't believe that. Three years ago, yesterday. Yesterday, right? Yeah, in <laughs> Copenhagen. And uh, we met when we were studying in that uh, student like what's it? Summer exchange in Copenhagen. It was. Actually, pretty fun. We hang out around for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same, uh, the same trip length that you've done. Yeah, it's the same recently, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about that a bit? The exchange? No, the Contiki one. Sure, yeah. yeah you uh, just came back from it. So. I did. Yeah, I came back. Uh, we finished on Saturday. Today is Wednesday night, so I've had about five days of a break from uh, about four days of a break. You are traveling for an entire year now, actually, even more than yeah, a year. Yeah, 400 days, uh, 13 months. Yeah, and what are you looking for? What are your uh, expectations in terms of what's Corey Wonderland today? Yeah. What's going to be in one year? Um, who is it you're going to be and yeah. um, why you're doing this? It's a great question. Um, I have no expectations. I think. A lot of people who travel the world, they often talk about a life-changing experience, something that they found enriching and fulfilling and changed their life. And I feel like if I went into this trip expecting my life to be changed, I'm just going to be disappointed. I, I know my life will change. I don't know to what, to what extent. I don't know how that's going to change, but I'm not putting any expectation on what that's going to be. I really just wanted to see the world in a way that I haven't been able to in the past and to free myself of, of the corporate world. I've been doing the same thing for roughly the last 14 years and I wanted a break and I thought this is the first time in my life I could actually take off and travel. I didn't have a mortgage, I didn't have kids, I didn't have a wife. So it was a lot easier for me to do this at this point in my life um, and I had the money to do it. I think if I had done this 15 years ago. I wouldn't have been able to, to go as long as I'm going to be able to right now. I have no regrets about doing it now. I think it's uh, the right time. Mm -hmm. And I guess age comes to a particular uh, comes of particular interest for the people that attend the Kentucky. So uh, how you find uh, this relationship between you probably being also uh, the most mature among them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that that has been interesting. On this trip, uh, in particular, it was difficult. Um, the average age was probably 21, if mm -hmm. not 20. And the, I'm 35, the next oldest person was 27. And that's a big gap. So I did find it was a lot more difficult to, to bond with people in a way. I mean, bond's not the right word, because I, I did bond with everybody. But there were times where I felt like the only adult in the room. And um, I did sometimes have to pull in like, being cranky, mm -hmm. uh, it's like, oh, it's, it's 2 a.m., why are you still partying? I just want to shut the party down. 
and I have to, to dial that back and think, no, they're young, they're having fun, this is their party, let them do what they want. Do you find uh, that nationalities is also a problem in, uh, in this kind of trips, or do you think that it's just purely based on age? Um, I don't think either, actually, because I, I, I don't think people bonded based on age. Uh, because some of my, like, the, the guy that I was really close with, Ethan, he was 18 and him and I hung out more than anybody. Uh, one of the girls on the trip, Mia, she was 19, and I hung out with her more than I hung out with anybody. So the age itself wasn't a factor. Uh, it was, I would say the level of maturity, both of them had a level of maturity that, um, that I respected and that I admired. Oh, oh so, shit, bitch, <laughs> you, you suck so there much. There are gonna be like dolphin noises over that. If there's not dolphin noises over that, I'll be pissed. This guy is an 18 year old immature wanker. Speak for yourself. Look at they're making fun of my sandals. Four hundred dollars for here. Let me look at them. Let's look at your sandals. What are those? <laughs> those are expensive sandals. Um, but they also would dial it back if there was a problem. They knew when to turn that off and, and to, be to, serious. to be serious and to get focused. Um, so yeah, I don't think the age was an issue. And in, in terms of nationality, uh, we all kind of just you kind of forgot where people came from. I mean, you could hear it in their accents. We had. Nine or ten New Zealand uh, New Zealanders. We had uh, Kiwis. We had um, twelve or thirteen Australians, and then we had three Canadians. So we all mingled together, and um, I mean, I probably spoke with Canadians the least of the people on the trip. Um, so yeah, it, the, the actual nationality wasn't a factor. Okay. Yeah, it, it, that's one of the great things about Kentucky is that you really get to meet people from all around the world and they're all fantastic people and so I would never have met them in any other situation mm -hmm. and so yeah it's just actually quite cool. It's admirable what you are doing I think you're living the, the dreams that many of us have like see the world at least once in a lifetime and say yeah. you know what um, screw this I'm gonna quit my job that's what exactly I'm doing and yep. then trying uh, to see uh, the world like experience different cultures and how has this developed like because it's quite uncommon and you, you can always you, you can of course afford that but uh, you can also do other things with your money so where comes this passion to, to see the world and the fact that um, you decide to invest in this yeah um... So part of it is my age. So with Kentucky in particular, they have an 18 to 35 demographic. And I'm 35, so this is my last chance to do a lot of these trips. And originally when I thought about quitting my job to travel, I thought I would do a couple of Kentikis. And there was a, a few that I really wanted to do. And then the more research I did, uh, that few turned into a dozen that I really wanted to do. And then that turned into 20 that I really wanted to do. So, um, the more I thought about it, I thought, well, wouldn't that be cool to just do an entire year of Kentucky? Mm -hmm. And so I decided that that is where I was going to spend my money. I, I, I probably could travel for years uh, without doing Kentucky. And it would be a different pace, though. I would be in cities where I could spend a month at a time. And, and that's great. I actually I hope one day I can do that. Uh, but there's something about the the go, go, go with Kentucky that I thrive off of. I mean, you've run a marathon before. Mm -hmm. you, you know that challenge. And just traveling for the sake of traveling isn't exciting to me. I like the idea of, of being run down and, and seeing what I'm made of and, and meeting new people every other week. And uh, that's exciting to me. And Kentucky offers a way to do that in a, in a controlled environment. In a lot of ways, I feel like I'm on Survivor because you're, you're stuck with a group of people. Some people you hate, some people you love. You're Imagine. constantly thinking about who you want to vote off. Um, and especially this rose trip, like I mean, I feel like I, I just finished the show because it, it was basically as long as uh, season of Survivor. But there's an excitement to that, and you're you're doing adventurous activities. You're doing whitewater rafting. You're doing rope climbing. You're going on cruises. Like you're you're constantly engaged. And I wouldn't do that on my own. If I was traveling on my own without Kentucky, I would be making friends in a hostel, and I might hang out with them for a day or two, and then move on and have to make new friends all the time. So. Um, there's something great about traveling with a, a group for a period of time and doing all those activities together, making friends for life, and then being able to reach out to them three years later and crash at their place. What I'm curious to see is that how you're going to change 
uh, from who you are now to who you're gonna be in one year when you have met 300 people and experienced different cultures and basically you will have that kind of knowledge that many people don't have mm -hmm. and you will have a, a view of the, uh, about life that is gonna be um, totally different than the rest of the people. So I, I feel like that you are not worried about being uh, different than that. And that's what makes uh, you really cool about, right? Because um, like a lot of people have this, uh, how you say, this dream, I wanna do it, I wanna go on the moon, but then at the end of the day, uh, they don't have the balls to do that. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. A lot of people say, oh, I wish I was as brave as you. I wish I could take that risk. And I guess it's a risk. Um, but I, I, I didn't have a lot to lose when I did it. Uh, I, I had given up everything to leave Calgary for Vancouver for a job. And that meant selling my house and saying goodbye to my family and friends. And, and after a year of, of being on my own in Vancouver, I did realize that me leaving to travel the world wasn't that much different. The only difference was is rather than being locked in Vancouver and, and going to a job that, um, I, I didn't mind the job, but I didn't love the job. Uh, but rather than being locked there, I could unlock myself and, and travel the world. And I'm open to the fact that I will have a transformative experience. Um, I'm excited to know a year from now how I'm different. And I don't know if I'll know how I'm different. I feel like I'll need other people to tell me how I've changed because I think it's going to be something subtle in a way um, that I'm not aware of. I'm already finding myself using words that um, that I normally don't, uh, such as, uh, I'm going to go use the toilet. I would never say that. I would say I'm going to go use the washroom. Uh -huh. And anytime I said washroom on that trip, uh, people called me out on it and they're like, that's a dumb word. And like, wash room, wash room. And then we're going to go to the washroom <laughs> and they're going to pee in the toilet because <laughs> they're disgusting. And I call it a, I call it a washroom. Washroom. And they make fun of me for that. We do, because it's funny. Uh, so that's that's one word. Uh, I've started saying stuff like um, That's cool ass or that's sweet ass uh, When I first started the trip I would someone would say oh, that's that's sweet ass. I'd be like sweet as what? And they'd be like no, there's nothing that comes after that. It's that it's sweet ass or okay cool I've never, never had that. It's a it's like an Australian New Zealand thing um, and so You it doesn't need any justification. It's just like oh, this is hot ass yeah. She's from New Zealand Anyways. Kiwis for like oh. hot ass. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, hot as what? So now I just finished the sentence, but oh, it's hot ass, <laughs> and you can fill in whatever you want. Um, and so I, I, I comes I, handy. It comes it handy. It does come handy. So I'm I'm using terminology that I wouldn't normally use. Um, so I, I think that's like a small thing, um, but the more comfortable I am with that, I think the more open I'm going to be to to changing my life in, in other more subtle ways that I'm. I can't foresee right now, uh, but I think I'm excited. I, I do think I'm going to go through an emotional roller coaster. Uh, there'll probably be some people that I become very, very close with on this trip, and then I have to say goodbye. Uh, I'm sure there'll be people that I um, am not a, a big fan of, and that I, I, I can't stand, and I can't wait to get away from them. So there's going to be that. I'm going to probably feel homesick at some point. Uh, and, and I don't know when that point will come. I'm only on day 137 of 400, so I'm not even halfway yet. But I knew this would happen eventually. I just hope that the feeling goes away soon. I did think this was a great trip to start because I've got 400 days and this trip was roughly 10% of the way, and that was just on one trip. And I thought at the end of this trip, if I'm not having a good time, I could cancel all the other trips. Like I, I, I'm only committed about 45 days in advance of every other trip. So I could just finish the next couple that I have and then go home and, you know, admit go defeat, life, yeah. go back to my life. Um, but at the end of this trip, all I could think about was I can't wait to start the next one. Um, and I just, I want to be, I want to be there right now. Uh, I, I mean, I want to hang out with you too. But, uh, but there is a part of me that just can't wait to start the next trip. And that's, that's a good place to be. I think that if I was dreading... It's a marathon mentality, right? It's a marathon mentality, yeah. Get it done. Get to the end of it. Yeah. And, and I, mean, and that's, I mean, part of your question, too, is about the idea that it's a challenge. And, and I like challenging myself. And every year I try to find something new to challenge myself. And, 
Uh, last year was Vancouver. Uh, two years ago was finishing 98. Three years before that, it was running a bunch of races. Um, I did uh, a year of Spartan races and Tough Mudders. And so this year was, can I do 20 Kentuckys and uh, and live to tell the tale? So at this point, we wonder what's going to be next, right? We said I, the Tokyo 2021, right? We're gonna, yeah, we want to do a Tokyo Marathon in 2021. Um, yeah, I don't know what's next, and, and I, I feel like this is going to be a hard one to talk. But every year, I feel like oh, it's going to be a hard one to talk. It's difficult for me to imagine or to ask questions about how it's going to be this year, because it's going to be so diverse from day one to 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 the to the end basically right because mm -hmm. you will experience so many countries so many culture mm -hmm. um so many people sometimes uh, i know you're gonna call me you're gonna cry it's gonna be okay i, I won't gonna... i won't cry i might call him but i won't cry <laughs> we can facetime of course and um I, like and i think that at least for the the people like us is difficult to imagine how it's gonna be for you during this um, this experience. That's why we're gonna watch your episodes. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. follow you. Yeah. But then at the end, what I wanna see is uh, how you're gonna how you change. <laughs> yeah. And what basically you wanted to see at the end of it. So what's your what's your dream at the end? Because it's uh, it's gonna end up basically in a year from now, right? It's more or less. Yeah, more or less a year from now. Um, and, and my dream would be that it doesn't end. Uh, the Kentikis will end. Uh, that's a given. I mean, I'll be too old to do Kentiki. Um, but the dream would be that somehow I, I found an audience that likes what I'm doing. They want to see the content that I'm producing. They want to see the places that that I'm seeing through my eyes and, and with, my, with my own take on things. And if I'm able to, to support myself financially with an online platform, I would love to just continue traveling. Uh, I have a lot of places I want to go, places that um, companies like Kentucky don't go. Uh, West Africa, for example, is a very high on my list of places I'd love to visit. Um, I think it'd be really fun to do six months in West Africa and just document that, that continent and, and really show places that most tourists don't go. Um, doing the Silk Road in the Middle East, I think, would be challenging. Uh, the Trans-Mongolian Railway in Russia would be really neat. Nepal, doing um, some stuff in the Himalayas. I mean, there, there, there's so many places that I want to go. And so if I can finish this year and be financially capable of, of still traveling, that's what I want to do. Um, so that would be the dream. That would be the, the ideal goal after all this is, is build an audience, uh, and, and get people that, that want to see my content. I mean, they don't need to pay me anything, um, but if they're watching my, my videos, if they're subscribing, if they're recommending my videos to their friends, um, I can help make it, or I can make advertisement revenue and I can make commission off of sales of things that I am selling, such as trips or maybe equipment. And, and I'll talk about you know the equipment that I brought on the trip and maybe people want to have the same camera as I do or the same lens. And, and so if I can monetize some of that stuff, then it does help make this a, a reality. Because um, I do love doing it, and I'm hoping that people love watching it. How much do you think the content you are putting out right now is good in the sense that, on a scale from 1 to 10, how I think uh, the content you are producing is, is good enough for YouTube or for your audience, um, what do you think you are missing? I think I would say, I'm going to put it at 6 right now, uh, 6 out of 10. So, the, the content is something that I need to, I, I've never done anything like this before. And so I, there are things after, I'm like, I wish I had captured that, or I wish I had talked about that, or um, I'll have filmed like a setup for something, but I never filmed the, the aftermath of it. And so it's like, I got the setup and I might have the content, but I don't have like a, an explanation at the end. And so there are things I wish I had captured and, and that's gonna come as I travel and I get better at this. And I've also filmed so much footage, way more than I need. I mean, I, I, my episodes right now are about 10 minutes long and I probably have for each episode about 30 minutes worth of footage. So, I mean, I, I've got a lot of extra footage that won't be in the episode. And I feel like I probably could have filmed, you know, a lot less than that and still had something worth posting. Yeah. Um, 
but I think from a, a quality of the video, like the, the sharpness, the 4K level, the, the camera I have is fantastic, uh, so that helps a lot. Um, I think the music is really, is really beautiful. Um, it, it's the story that I'm working on right now, and I think that will come over time as I get better at it and understand the story I want to tell. Part of it is that I don't know what journey I'm on right now. Uh, I know I'm on a journey. And yeah, I, we discussed about the, the story and how to, to basically also entertain people in a way and try and yeah. to... Because uh, like to continue is like a week long, but you, you, you produce a, week, a video every week. Every and week, yeah. It's difficult to compress seven days in that in that time frame because maybe there are days in which are good mood days in which you don't want to talk to every to anyone and yeah. it's just difficult to tell a story. So I guess what we're gonna see is you finding your rhythm, finding your style, and then they are gonna blend together, and we're gonna see very good quality episodes uh, along the way. Yeah, I think the episodes will continue to get better, and I think like any any art or anything creative, I, I you, you'd probably be very hard pressed to find someone who looks back at their early work and is proud and says, "Oh, that was great, that was amazing." Um, so I, I'm going in like I don't want to say um, I don't want to say that all oh, this stuff is fantastic because I already know future me is going to criticize it and be embarrassed by the stuff I'm putting out right now, but that's good because it's like. I'm proud of it enough right now to release it, and I I will be even more proud in the future when I've got episodes that I'm like, oh my god, I nailed it. Um, so I do I do know um, I'm aware how creators think about their early work, and I'm okay with that because I, I am prepared to hate everything I'm doing right now and find my rhythm three, four, five months in. Why people go on Kontiki? It's because they want to see CDs, or they want to get with, uh, with people, or because they want to bang each other, oh, to be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, probably all the above, or, okay. or, or some of the above. Um, there are some people who, I mean, you've got, I'll put it this way. So, no, 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 we don't care about people. Like, we are people, what they do in Kontiki, that's their business, it's up. what do we do there? What do I, what am I looking yeah. for? Uh, I am on Kentucky to, to travel the world and see the world and meet amazing people and people that I would not meet back home. And yes, that includes women that I wouldn't meet back home. Um, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And it's just natural when you've got a bunch of young people, I mean, I'm now old, but when, you're, when you've got a bunch of young people on these trips that very high intensity, you do find people that you, you fall for and, um, and it's, it's real, it's like a real, visceral emotional connection you make with these people and it can be very difficult to to rein that in and sometimes it doesn't work out it's like it's like high school except everyone is dating everyone else and you you just hope somehow you're special and do you feel that because on the on the contiki mm -hmm. like people are more open in the sense that or just all about you and because of like when you are in a city maybe you have your job you have your own your routine so it's a bit more difficult to meet new people and then um, you don't have the same intensity right but here we are talking about trips that last between seven or one month uh, within seven days and one month and then um, you you are able to create these connections that somehow you told me they are stronger than what you have been feeling home. So how, why do you think this is the case? And mm. I think it's because there's a defined end date. It's not like at home where if you see a cute girl or a girl sees a guy and they think, I could date that guy, but I could ask him out in a week or a month or like two months, or like I could get to know them first. On a Kentucky, you're like, oh my God, I've got three weeks here. Uh, I don't want to make a move too early because she might not feel the same way and then it gets awkward. Uh, but I can't wait we too late. We got experience in that. Yeah, I've got okay. experience in that for sure. Um, or you wait too late and then you, you actually hit it off and you're like, man, I should have done it earlier because this girl actually is really into me and we could, have, we could have spent more time together. So I think it's that expiration date. It's knowing that you've got a very short window. Plus there's a lot of alcohol involved too. So people are more honest, right? When you're drinking, people typically uh, express their feelings in a way that they don't when they're sober. So you have 
your inhibitions are reduced to the point where you probably are a bit more honest with how you feel than you would be back home. And it's also just like a, it's like high school where if someone likes someone, it doesn't take very long for everyone to figure that out. Of course. Or I guess you're gonna spend a lot of time together just yeah. to find the. It's like oh, well, those two seem to go off a lot. There must be something going on there. <laughs> or or even just like just people people like playing you know spin the bottle games or not really spin the bottle games but like uh, just questions where they they try to probe you and find out who you like and. Uh, you either tell the truth or you don't, and so it becomes. I guess you really don't care because you you know that if you if you come out and you have just two weeks left, I mean you suck it, and it's gonna be yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy that, and I just wish you good luck, mate. Thank you, and thank you for letting me stay here. It's an awesome place. I mean, you built this studio just for this interview. Well, we have the lights, we have the yeah. Well, Luckily, they cannot see what's behind. <laughs> There's a, a mess of stuff behind us where we moved everything out of the, uh, we did that. the foreground here. We did that. So, yeah. but and a lot of it's my packing because I catch a flight in. I had to leave here in like four hours. What time is it? It's eleven thirty. So, yeah, so I'm flying time. to Cologne for a wedding. Uh, my friend, actually, I, I uh, one of my old best friends. He met a girl when we did our first Kentucky 10 years ago. So it happens actually. It, it does can happen. happen. It does happen. Oh my God. Yeah. So 10 years ago we met a girl and they are getting married in Cologne on the 29th. So they're getting married in three days. And uh, so I'm going down to their wedding and it's gonna be really cool because I'm doing this Kentucky experience, this Kentucky journey and and uh, I was there when they met. Uh, so yeah, it's really kind of cool. It was the couple who were saying, oh, they are hanging out together a bit too much, those two. Huh? Yeah, they're hanging out a bit too much. Let's <laughs> gossip about that. That's 100% right. <laughs>